Hello everybody. How's it going? My name's Carpo. I'd just like to read you this poem I just wrote. It's really a little story, but it's a letter to people in foreign nations from me in the United States. It's on my computer, and I just finished it so I haven't printed it. I prefer to have a paper copy. But this is where it stands right now, and um, hopefully it's not too long. And this is in a way, my apology to other nations that the U.S. has invaded and an understanding that we're all on the same page. It's called Reflection. A glimpse into how the West has created an invisible enemy through our own lack of insight. While this paper is political in nature, I will begin by using the metaphor of reflecting on our own natures to explain my point. When we look into our past and carefully analyze the decisions we have made, a clear picture emerges, hopefully, of how we got to where we are now. To be sure, there are many chance encounters and unforeseeable conditions that create our reality. But for the most part, we have created it by our actions. We make decisions, and they may or may not be the best we know. But we are making them as individuals, not as a society. If we have enemies, it is most often because we have decided to not make them our friends. Being an enemy is different than not simply liking a person or disagreeing. Enemies have chosen to take sides for a variety of reasons. Perhaps a person was stolen from or beaten down by another and no apology was made. Perhaps a person had his homeland destroyed by a group of radicals and decides to make them an enemy. But it is always a choice. Always. To have enemies, one must choose to have them. Some circumstances are the exception. You may meet someone who treats you badly, merely for what you believe. You may be scolded for not taking a religion or a political view of another person. You may be hated for who you are, with no explanation at all. But just because you are someone's enemy does not mean they are yours. It's still a choice. So let me get to the point. One of the biggest reasons for the West to go into the Middle East has been to bring democracy and peace. We have claimed to help the indigenous peoples everywhere, and always portray ourselves as heroes. Why? Because being a white knight is far superior to admitting you are the pale horse of the apocalypse. We are told as citizens that these countries are a threat to our western values and security. We are told that they have weapons poised to annihilate us, and that an entire religion despises the American way of life. And people buy into it, because it is what our leaders and our representatives tell us, and since we are the ones who elected them, we expect them to tell us the truth. But nowadays we know better. Unfortunately, the big decisions to go into other countries and declare wars is an old business. It's one which has a history of abuse of power and land grabs. Strategic locations, oil reserves, gold mines, opium fields, coca fields, cannabis. These were the powers of yesterday, and still reign supreme today. However, as generations move forward, we see a change in slavery and policy. No longer is it just the drugs and energy supplies, nor is there any need to import slave labor to our own countries. Our shadow governments have made it near impossible to get ahead, creating a slave economy here and elsewhere. This means we are forced into doing the work and accepting low wages, or else have nothing. The one value we all share regardless of borders is to protect and feed our families. Often this is done without consideration of how things could be, or should be, or how it affects other cultures or people. Meanwhile, the U.S. has made a habit of giving bad loans to desperate countries, so they are forced, under conditions of the loan, to allow Western interests to invade their economy, and they end up working for the companies that own their new economy. And the indigenous peoples are either forced to work for low wages or promised great gifts, such as enlistment bonuses, as we do in the U.S., it just so happens that the U.S. military is reclaiming millions of dollars in bonuses from soldiers because of a clerical error. Soldiers that put their lives on the line and went to war for the underlying reason of fattening the pockets of a few and keeping our finger on the world's resources, as we always have done. But I digress. This message is to anyone and everyone who does not live in the United States of America. Those who have a view that we as a society are somehow a violent and abusive country those who have seen the destruction and torture done in the name of the U.S. citizens, which at least half of us disagree with completely, and many more are just ignorant due to some propaganda 
the same propaganda all governments use on their people to achieve patriotism. Ignorance, while not an excuse, is due to the circles of influence we endure and the variety of new sources feeding us the same garbage day in and day out. This is a message of peace, a way to say, I understand, we understand, the people of the U.S. have been fooled into perpetual war for a century or more now, and only more recently have these false pretenses for our involvement been surfacing for folks to see. Moreover, much of what is funded by black ops projects, they go unnoticed, the money funneled through programs and diversions that are out of our control. We are victims of the same machine that is destabilizing the world in the name of safety and progress. And we apologize to all of you for what our government has done to your lands and resources. To be fair, I should specify that the ones who are really behind the curtain are not the politicians we see on television. Those are mostly the puppets of the industry, and allow me to elaborate on their values or lack thereof. The machine does not have borders, but it uses patriotism as a tool to rally support and emotion. The machine does not have a religion, but it uses religious fundamentals to rally support and emotion. The machine does not have values, but it uses the facade of others' values to try to garner support and emotion from people who do not know any better. They may try to convince us that we are under fear of attack, or that we face economic turmoil, or that the sky is falling and only they can stop it, but we know this is not true. And we are fighting along with all of you who have been harmed by the empire, the machine. Let us remember, we are brothers and sisters. Once we see that we have been fooled, we can move forward. So long as we are divided along race, religion, and differences of opinion, we cannot come together to fight tyranny. I do not support the invasion of other countries. I do not support U.S. military bases in other countries. I do not support CIA involvement in other governments or even ours for that matter. I do not support free market capitalism as it stands now. I do not support a large military. I do not support the use of white phosphorus weapons. I do not use this, support the use of depleted uranium ammunition. I do not support the murder of civilians, ever. I do not support the use of torture, ever. Let me expound on this before I come to a close here. There are many complicated issues in the world that we cannot all understand completely. This is why it takes a society to decide what is best. This means often decisions will be made by a few for the many. Torture in any form is unacceptable. The argument that information can be obtained is false over 95% of the time. The confessions given rarely lead to any discoveries. But even if they did, physical and mental abuse and torture is one of the most shameful acts a human being can do. And when humans get into the group mindset about something, the echo chamber takes over. The U.S. people as a whole do not support torture or imprisonment without proper representation, and not within other countries. This includes the psychological torture we use on entire countries on a regular basis. It is appalling. I am with all of you. Many of us are. Not all Americans are selfish, arrogant assholes as the media portrays. In many ways, I am ashamed to be part of the culture I live in, but I stand strong with others who share the same values and hope for a better future. I cannot run from this house, but I can try my best to clean it up and educate those I meet. We can make one a better world, if we try. But we have to set aside our differences and see us as people who share the value of life and equality. Namaste. Had to add the namaste in the end. I suppose I could sit and try to explain where I'm coming from on this one, but I think it's pretty obvious. Often when people talk about these subjects, they're dismissed as being, you know, either not in the know or not patriotic enough. These are the games that our government has played on us for decades. That if you don't support what we're doing in this world, then you're somehow not fit to be an American or love it or leave it type attitude. Well, I tell those people, hell no, I'm not going anywhere. I live here, I've always lived here, and I will fight for what's right. I am an American, and therefore I have the right to speak as an American. But I do not agree with all American values. I do not share the values of many Americans. And yes, I live on a coastal state, what you might call a blue state. But blue and red aren't necessarily uh, 
any gauge as to how a country thinks. You can break it down into cities, into, gov into local communities and homes, and everybody thinks differently and has their own opinions. And often they're based on a misunderstanding or a lack of the proper information. And people know now that they've been fed bullshit and that the media makes it worse. You don't get the true story. You hear what's going on with Justin Bieber or what a rapper said to someone. It has nothing to do with real world issues because people don't want to hear it and because there are people who don't want us to hear it. But those of us who have searched these things out know that there is a lot of alternative media and news out there, but you have to sort through that too. A lot of bullshit. You can go to the Alex Jones channel and waste your time. Uh, there's nothing there. He's just a troublemaker in my opinion. There is some good information out there, but you have to figure out what to do with it and utilize it. But this isn't about that. This was really my way of saying that I understand to all the people out there who judge Americans based on what they've seen and what they've heard that I'm going to try really hard not to judge another country based on what I've seen and I'm hoping that we can all share that, the reciprocation. I think chatting online has given us a new view of how each other think and I think that's really important. It really isn't us against them, and it isn't us against us. It's us against tyranny, and whoever decides to sponsor that tyranny. So, peace, and uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. And just remember your mortality. <laughs>